I used to thoroughly enjoy my evening walks up through Crooksmoor and around the Ponderosa. As the nights grew darker in the autumn months, the silhouettes of the trees would cast glorious shadows in the dull orange glow of the street lamps. I'd spend hours roaming around, lost in my thoughts, a welcome escape from the drudgery of the working week with its constant demands and deadlines. Out here I was free. I felt alive again. Foggy evenings with a misting of rain were the best, and it was on one such evening that something happened that has tormented me ever since. I set off on my usual route as darkness started to fall, up through the darkened paths of the Ponderosa. Richard and Rob were always on the bench at the start of my walks, clutching the brown paper bag that contained whatever they were drinking that evening. They'd been there every night for years, offering smiling faces as they drank themselves unconscious, self-medicating for whatever trauma each one of them must have gone through the years before. Good luck, they'd shout to me without fail as I wandered off into the darkness. I often wonder if it was their blessings that saved me that night. I walked up through the wooded pathway that circled a big field and came out near Crooksmoor Park. Deciding to cross the road over to a narrow one-way street called Mushroom Lane. The lane has a high stone wall to the left, too high to climb, and to the right a smaller wall fences off the park, which at this time of night was pitch black. The dim street lights made the fog glow and a slight drizzle of rain dampened the cobble floor. As I walked up the lane in this surreal orange haze, I had a sudden urge to leave with what most would call a gut feeling. I knew I shouldn't go up Mushroom Lane, yet I was intrigued as to why, so steadily carried on. I'd walked far enough to notice I could no longer see the entrance to the lane behind me, nor the exit in front, when, in the distance, right in the middle of the lane, a shadow slowly came into view. It seemed to be limping, and its movements were very slow and deliberate. I guess I must have thought it was just someone else out for a slow walk and I carried onwards up the lane. It must have been around 200 metres away as the shadow started to get clearer and I stopped in my tracks. At this distance I could see what looked like a twisted creature, still just a silhouette but nevertheless very real as he staggered towards me menacingly. Its limbs were bent in awkward positions and although it was shaped like a human, its legs looked like they were back to front as it threw its clumsy body forward towards me. I looked back down the lane, unable to see the road at the bottom due to the fog, then glanced back to the thing. Although it was moving very slowly and deliberately, as I'd looked away it had somehow gained a hundred metres and the distance it had covered was way disproportionate to the speed it was trying to walk. I wasted no time in turning back in a brisk walk back down the lane. As I reached the road at the bottom, I glanced back. Good God, it was right behind me. I took off in a sprint when I felt the creature's warm, foul breath burn the back of my neck, its twisted limbs shuffling as its sharp fingers tried to grab me. I ran as fast as possible back down the Ponderosa and past Rich and Rob who lay passed out on the bench. Run! I screamed with the only breath left in me. It was right behind me, no matter how fast I ran, and the sound of its fast shuffling was only broken by a grunting noise it started to make as its flailing arms scratched at my back. After what seemed like a lifetime I reached my house. Luckily, I would not locked the door, so ran straight in, bolting it, as the creature slammed its body into it, now snarling in rage. I wedged a chair under the door handle for added security as it bashed at the door, and I crouched down under the window, fearful it would see me and smash through the glass. After a minute or so, the banging abruptly stopped, leaving me numb with terror as I spent the rest of the night in that very position. Whether I drifted off or not, I'll never know, but the welcome dawn came quickly and I finally felt safe enough to open the back door after checking the thing had gone, carefully peering through the window. I'll never be able to describe the terror I felt that night and often wonder just what that awful creature was. But my nightly walks ended there. <laughs>